Hi guys, Virtus Education here with episode 14 of the Cryengine 3 SDK Beginner Tutorial Series. And in today's episode, we're going to be looking at the Environment tab. Now, this tab inside the Cryengine allows us to play around with a whole variety of settings related to the environment. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of some of the different settings that we can play around with. For example, we can set the wind settings, we could change the ocean, we could change uh, some HD HDR settings, we could change the moon, and so on and so forth. Now, most of you probably will not know about the environment tab, and you know, you can change most of these settings by themselves somewhere else. For example, if I wanted to, I could change some of the HDR settings in the time of day editor or I could change the material for the ocean somewhere else, you can play around with the settings for that and so on and so forth, but this lovely tab brings together all of the environment settings and it enables us to, you know, modify the environment really, really easily. So, let's just go ahead and get started. So, if you want to go to the terrain tab, all you got to do is go to the uh, if you want to go to the environment tab, just go to the terrain tab in the roll up bar and then just go ahead and press the environment button here and we'll get this nice lovely list of settings that we can go, go ahead and play around with. So we'll start off from the very top with the settings that we want to go over and that is the fog distance. So for example if I wanted some fog I might reduce the fog distance quite significantly. If I go ahead and set it to 15 down from uh, down from 100, you're going to see that our fog is really, really close to us. If I wanted to, I could push that back a little bit if I wanted more fog. And you can see if that works uh, pretty much just like this. Now, you can play around with the settings for the fog, fog to make it less opaque and whatnot, but I'm not going to be showing you that in today's episode. You can also change the view distance low spec for the fog if you wanted to. So, for example, you could change it to 1, 0, whatever, you know, just to help performance. But you don't really need to know too much about that as of right now. Anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and set this back to... 1000 uh, which it was by default so that we can actually see our environment a little bit more so the next setting we can play around with is the terrain detail layers view distance ratio this essentially allows us to change uh, the distance at which your your terrain goes into the low level of detail version so for example if I go ahead and go back here you can see some of it by default has gone and set it to low uh, just to help out performance. If I was to set this to something like uh, 18, 10, you know, the distance gets further away before the view distance changes. So if I was to go ahead and set this to 0 0.1, just like this, you can see pretty much everything has gone down to the low detail version and only what is really, really close to me, uh, as you can see my camera, is, you know, gone into the high detail version. So let's just go ahead and go down here. If I just run along you can see that it's sort of a ring around me uh, within the you know, 1, 0.1 radius that we have here. That is actually the high detail. Now doing this can drastically increase the, uh, the FPS and performance for the player as it does not need to render the high detail textures everywhere. However, keeping that in mind you've got to make sure that you get the right mix between performance and visual quality because as of right now you can really notice that it's low detail back there so you might want to just play around with that distance a little bit I tend to go with something like a 0 0.2 free so pretty much quite a lot of the stuff you see in front of you will be that high detail but pretty much anything uh, far back will be low detail so the next setting I wanted to go over was the wind stuff. Now this is really interesting. I believe I have gone over wind just in a little bit detail on a per asset basis. The environment tab actually allows us to define the wind strength and style uh, all from this little area and do so globally. So over here we've got the wind vector settings. If I wanted to I could go ahead and make all physics objects uh, sway in the wind, I can change the intensity and so on. If your assets are not able, enabled for physics manipulation, then they simply won't move, they'll stay static. Something like this lighthouse, whereas the trees will be moving. 
So, if I was to set it to 5 on this axis, you can see my trees are going to start to speed up, they're going to start going crazy. If I set this to something like 15, they'll get even more crazy, start blowing in the wind even more and more. Now, just keep in mind you've got three different axes here. You've got the X, Y, and Z axes. So just make sure you just make sure you keep that in mind. You can make them sway in any direction you so please. You can make them sway left, you can make them sway right, up, down, you know, whatever you like. So, you've also got a whole bunch of different uh, breeze settings here, but I'm not necessarily going to be going over those. You're free to just go ahead and, uh, you know, experiment with some of these, like, uh, breeze lifetime, breeze strength, and so on and so forth. So, the next setting we wanted to go over here is show terrain surface. Well, you don't really need this. This just essentially allows you to turn on the terrain off and on. If you want to do that, you can also do it from the render tab. Uh, just go ahead and go into here in the render settings and then just go and uncheck um, the terrain just like that. And you can do that for pretty much anything you like. So the skybox, the shadow maps, the roads and whatnot. But you don't really need to know about that. Just go ahead and play around with it if you ever want to, you know, just get something out of the way when you're trying to work around it. You know, just go ahead and uncheck it in the meantime. So, the next setting that I wanted to go over is some awesome cloud shadows. So you can see here in my environment, occasionally we get these little shadows going over my scene. You will not have these by default. Um, you can, however, go ahead and make them from here. So basically what this is, is a, essentially just a texture, which is defining where the shadows are going to be. In this case, we're going to have the shadows in the white area, and we're going to have it all completely opaque in the, uh, sorry, completely transparent in the black areas. This is essentially just um, an opacity map, basically built for your your shadows. So if you want to, if you want to go ahead and get some of these shadows, just go ahead and press the open bit. Then under Game SDK, textures, clouds, just go ahead and uh, select one that you like. Now we've also got a bunch of settings down here for the speed. If I wanted to, I could make it really fast on one axis, really fast on two, you know, make it slow, fast, whatever I like. Personally, I tend to keep mine relatively slow to make it realistic. Clouds do not move very fast, so just keep that in mind. Okay, one second. Okay, sorry about that, my alarm uh, just went off. Anyway, so, let's uh, let's go ahead and move on. The next settings which we wanted to go over was the skybox. Now, the skybox is essentially just a sphere around the entire world that has some kind of texture on it that looks like the sky. So, by default, we have this, this white, sorry, blue skybox up here. We can actually change this for something with a texture if we wanted to. To do that, all we got to do is just go ahead and press this little button here where it says material. And then inside of the material editor, we need to go ahead and choose something a little bit more fitting. The default material is just sky, which is just completely plain. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one. Uh, so let's just go ahead and right click and press assign to selected actors. If this does not work, all you got to do is just go ahead and type it in to the material uh, bit here. So let's just go ahead and do that. It's going to delete sky, and I'm going to type in evening underscore overcast. Press enter, and you can see that my skybox material has now changed. It's a little bit more realistic. Um, there's still a few issues, but it should get better once we add some proper fog and whatnot in there. And just also, I want you to keep in mind that the skybox material will actually reflect onto the... Um, onto the ocean. So you can see here the clouds are making a real effect on here and it looks awesome. Anyway, you can also play around with settings for material low specs so when you're far, far away it's going to change to something else. You don't really need to worry about that. Uh, skyboxes are generally just one texture and they're not really usually that high res. We can also play around with angle if we wanted to which just essentially allows us to rotate it. Uh, you know, you can rotate it by 360 degrees. I'm not necessarily going to play around with that um, 
but you're free to rotate it if you want a certain area of your skybox to be you know where the player is walking towards or something like that you can also play around with the stretching you can stretch it so it goes up down left right or whatnot so I can stretch it here and you can see that it's going to adjust based on the player's height I tend to not have this effect, uh, it's not high anyway, so I'm just going to leave it at 0.5 so it's not moving, it looks static, you know, like the sky should be. So, let's go over the next few settings. The next few settings are for the ocean. Now, the ocean is pretty cool to play around with, we've got lots of settings that we can manipulate, uh, including materials, some acoustics, we've got some wind direction stuff. Uh, waves, we can play around with those. There's lots and lots of control that we have here. So I'm just going to go ahead and try and go over them as quickly as I possibly can. So, let's start off by uh, changing the material. All you got to do is go into the material here, and then you can select something. All you got to do is just right click it, assign to selected actors. If that's no good, just type in the location of your material uh, the way you would do uh, with the skybox as I showed you. And I'm just going to quickly pause the recording here as my CryEngine has crashed. Okay guys, so we're back again. So, um, yeah, having said that, let's just go over to the material editor and if we wanted to, we can go ahead and choose a material for our ocean. Now, the default one that I have here actually looks really, really good. But you are, feel, you are completely free to go ahead and change it. So, if I wanted to, I could set it to the ocean generic material. Uh, or something like that, but I'm just gonna leave it uh, for now. The default one is very, very pretty. The most important stuff that we're gonna be going over is gonna be like the wave stuff and uh, the acoustic depth, intensity, tiling, and whatnot. So let's uh, start off by going over the acoustic stuff. So when we go under the water here and we look at some of our terrain and whatnot, we've got these little wavy light lines going on here. Now we can play around with a few different settings for these. We could set the depth to, uh, so we can change the intensity to make them really bright, make them very visible, or we can even set them nice and low and subtle, or we can even turn them off completely. So zero being off and eight being really intense. Now we've also got a depth setting for these. These are only going to go down uh, to a certain depth. That depth by default being 8. If we wanted it to go deeper, we could set something like 15. And you can see the depth has just been increased. If I go down some more, you can see it's disappeared. So I'm going to set it to 25. Bring it down a little bit more as you can see here. You don't really need to worry about acoustic depth too much because usually the player won't have to go deep inside of the water unless you're doing some kind of water environment where the player has to physically go underneath it I advise you keep it low just for the sake of performance uh, we can also play around with tiling on here the tiling is pretty simple it just essentially allows you to uh, inc reduce the size of it uh, you know just by tiling it by set to 4 it's just going to multiply the texture by 4 so it's nice and small uh, acoustics usually tend to be relatively big, so I'm just going to leave that on one the way that it is now. Now it's now it's time for the fun stuff uh, to play around with the waves. Now waves are pretty cool, so let's just go ahead and do this. Ignore the wind speed and wind direction stuff for now. So let's go ahead and play around with wave amount. The wave amount essentially allows you to define how many waves you want there to be. If I was to set this to 15, you can see there's lots and lots of waves. Set this to 25, there's more. If I set it to 0, hopefully it should just be all one big flat water. Now, you can play around with this to change it to different environments. If there's no wind at all, you probably wouldn't have wind, uh, you probably wouldn't have waves, just be one nice, calm uh, bit of water. So I'm just going to set this to uh, 1 for now, that seems reasonable. You know, let's set it to 2, and there we go, we've got pretty much, uh, it's not very windy, but it's reasonable. And we can also play around with the wave size. Now, I just want to give you a word of warning, when you play around with wave size, be very, very careful. If you set this too high, it's going to completely destroy your waves. You know, these waves are being generated from uh, normal maths and some bump maths and so on and so forth there's only a certain amount that these can come out so I'm just going to set this to 1 
and you can see that that's uh, relatively larger now and doesn't look like it's broken so whenever playing with the wave size I advise that you only do it between 0 which is nothing and uh, and uh, pretty much 1 now the default being 0 0.75 you know it just gives you pretty much a, a solid point in between so that's pretty much everything you need to get, know about that. Feel free to play around with other ocean settings like wind speed, wind direction. Uh, wind direction essentially allows you to change which way the waves are going to be flowing. The wind speed allows you to change, you know, the speed of the waves, how fast they move and whatnot. But, you know, it's not too important as of right now. So the next setting I wanted to go over is the moon stuff. Now, you won't necessarily be able to see the moon uh, due to the time of day. It's meant to be uh, morning, evening uh, right now. However, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and change the longitude and latitude to bring it up uh, globally. So you can see here, I just played around with that. I can't see anything at all because the time of day is wrong. I will, however, be dedicating an entire video to the time of, uh, time of day editor, allowing you to change your time of day, make it night, day, and so on and so forth. Um, but what you need to know from here is that you can change the size of the moon, and you can also change the texture of the moon. And this texture is just going to essentially be a sphere projected onto your skybox uh, in whatever position you set it to there. Now, the last settings that we've got here is just a little, a few little uh, HDR stuff, uh, more specifically, Bloom. Now, if I go ahead and set this to 5, you can see it just got really bright. Uh, all the lighter colors have these sort of reflections and extra light on top of it. You know, that's essentially what Bloom is. I should probably just go ahead and Google Bloom for you just to get you a better example. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You see Bloom in most engines. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to... Oh, okay, that's not right. Yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm not going to Google Bloom. Uh, anyway, so Bloom essentially just lighter colors, you know, gives it this little tint, this little extra level of intensity. We can change that if you wanted to. If we can set it to 15, it'd be really, really hazy. You know, you might want to do this for making sort of dreamy environments or really light environments where, you know, it's going to be hard to see. For example, in a desert, it's going to be really black, it's going to be really light. And you might also want to change the color of your bloom if you so please. Uh, for example, if it's a desert, we would give it this sort of uh, yellowy tint to match the sand. We could set it to pink, or if we were on acid, or you know something like that. But you know, that's pretty much everything for the environment tab. As of right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn my bloom down completely. I'm not a big fan of it. Anyway, that's pretty much everything for the environment tab. Feel free to play around with a whole bunch of these different settings. See what you can do. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.